sleep aids the last night. Some researchers have suggested the use of melatonin. Uh, they used to tell us uh, back in the 80s, uh, they told us that uh, if you wanted to live a long and happy life uh, and, and not age, uh, that you could take melatonin and that would, uh, that would keep you from aging. It doesn't work. What is melatonin? Is it like a chemical or? Yeah, melatonin is a neurotransmitter. It, um, <clears throat> it, it, it tells your brain uh, when it's nighttime. Uh, it tells, tells your brain when to go to sleep. Uh, so if you're on a normal schedule, uh, during the day, of course, you're, you're not producing any melatonin, but then as soon as it gets dark, you start producing more melatonin, and by the time it's time to go to bed, you're sleepy because the melatonin has accumulated to that extent. Now, what they tell you to do is that you can take melatonin uh, to combat uh, uh, jet lag. So if you fly from Los Angeles to New York, you can take melatonin, and you'll, it'll put you on the right uh, sleep cycle. Uh, we're talking about three hours here. Uh, if you go the other direction, you can do exactly the same thing. Uh, I used to, where was I? And I flew in to see my son in, I was in Mississippi, and I flew into to, uh, California. He was at Los An in Los Angeles at the time. So we were on uh, Central Time, I think, and that's two hours. So. You know, I'd go to visit my son, and he, he was a bartender at the time, and he stayed up until 4 or 5 in the morning. Oh, God, it was horrible. You know, so I'm on a regular schedule, and, and he's, going, he's going to bed at 5 or 6 in the morning. Or 6 or 7 in the morning, I mean, he, and he would go eat breakfast, and then he'd go home and, go, and, and take a nap. What he called a nap, but he was sleeping for 4 or 5 hours. But, of course, I couldn't get on his schedule. It was just impossible. So were people who do stuff at night... Uh, they could still take that in the day? They could take this stuff during the day and it, it potentially should put them to sleep. It doesn't work because sunlight dissipates this stuff. So you'd have to you'd have to uh, put you'd have to block all the windows in your in your room. It'd have to be an almost black room in order for any of this stuff to work. It didn't work. And melatonin is, does not make you uh, you know it's not the fountain of youth. It it, uh, it just doesn't doesn't work that way. However, <clears throat> we can make you feel better by if you eat uh, fatty foods. Fatty foods have tryptophan in them, uh, especially dairy products. So if you eat um, ice cream or, or if you eat cheese uh, okay, before you go to bed, bed, you'll get tryptophan, and the tryptophan turns into serotonin, and serotonin puts you to sleep. I had a student who was very sensitive to tryptophan, <clears throat> and this was, this was at uh, Fort Belknap, and she lived in Chinook, which was about 30 miles away. She, was, she would drive back and forth to school every day. Uh, one time they had pizza, and she only ate cheese pizza, she didn't eat pepperoni. Okay. Anyway, so she ate, she ate pizza, and she fell asleep on the way home, and she ran through somebody's fence. I know. She, she, she was out one night. She was out one night, and, and this is before she even knew the word tryptophan. Uh, she was out one night, and she uh, had, had she had been drinking, but not that much. Uh, but she ate. She was eating, you know, lumps of cheese, and she got in her car, and she just fell asleep. And the cops came, and they saw this woman slumped over in her car, so they woke her up and. They could barely get her up, and they, they arrested her for, for being drunk in public. <clears throat> but then when they gave her the breathalyzer, she, she blew um, 0 0.05 or something. Really, really a low number. It, and it wasn't, it wasn't high enough for, her to, for them to, to have arrested her and charged her with drunk driving, which they didn't do anyway. It's really kind of interesting. Anyway, she tripped her She was really sensitive to drift effect. <laughs> uh, so the good thing is that you need to, uh, I mean, you can use, you can use cheese, you can use, uh, you can use ice cream to put yourself to sleep. This is why uh, in the old days they used to put you to bed with a warm milk. Why warm milk? Why not cold milk? Because the warm milk gets into your system a lot 
faster. So you drink, yeah, you drink warm milk and go to bed and you'll fall right to sleep, theoretically, if you're having problems sleeping. Uh, oh. Turkey. Turkey has tryptophan in it, and that's the reason people fall asleep because of the because of the tryptophan. Yeah. As cool as that is, so everybody eats their turkey dinner for Thanksgiving. They sit down in front of the television set and they nod off. A lot. Of a lot. Yeah. And and that's fine. That's that's a good idea. <clears throat> yeah. So just eat a turkey sandwich before you before you go to bed, and you'll be okay. Don't take, don't take uh, yeah, Ambien, don't take uh, it, Lunesta. It, it doesn't matter how it's cooked, right? What, the turkey? Yeah. No. No. I mean, how do you, are, are you, you don't fry turkey, well, I guess you yeah, can. Yeah, you can. I've had it last year, it's great. Yeah, yeah, I guess you can not fry turkey. But that's just the skin, it's the white, it's the white meat that puts you to sleep. Uh, the dark meat works too. It's got lots of tryptophan in it. But uh, anyway, there you go. Let's let's go to let's go to sleep with using natural means. Uh, narcolepsy. I told you we had. I had that uh, guy that we worked with. Uh, we boarded him. He boarded out of the service. Uh, he, he, they medical boarded him, boarded him out of the service because he couldn't function in a in a, um, uh, in, a in an emergency. He couldn't function in an emergency. So we had to board him out. Uh, narcolepsy is an affliction where the individual has a sudden attacks of sleep that last for 5 to 30 minutes. It's really kind of fascinating to watch these people drop out. Uh, during waking hours, uh, usually but they, every, it, it occurs every 90 minutes. These individuals are different from normal because they go directly into REM sleep. Now, if you remember REM sleep, REM sleep, you're, it's, you're paralyzed. Uh, your muscles go completely flaccid. In other words, you can't move why your muscles don't work and that's what happens to these individuals so if they're standing there they will just collapse to the ground like a house of cards as weird as that is and that's why my friend uh, would always sit down um, he would uh, sit down before he he fell down is what he was doing and he would it was kind of amazing I mean he was like a noodle when he was when he was in narcolepsy yeah. and you could you could grab his arm and you know you know, shake it, his muscles. He was kind of funny. <clears throat> anyway, these individuals uh, display cataplexy, loss of muscle tone, that's what I was talking about. Uh, they have sensory hallucinations and, of course, sleep, sleep paralysis. The problem is often triggered when the individual becomes excited. Uh, I, there's a couple of videos. I've got a couple of videos right here. These are really kind of fascinating if you want to watch it. This is mean. Uh, this, the, the guy, the, uh, the young lady has uh, narcolepsy and he scares her and she passes out. Of course she passes out. And he does it as a joke so that he can take a video of it. And I'm thinking, I would not marry somebody who was that cruel that they would do that to me. Anyway, it's really kind of fascinating. Uh, the other narcolepsy is a, is a film. This lady did have narcolepsy. And they they walked around and filmed this lady falling asleep. It's really kind of fascinating. Anyway, that's if you want to see some uh, some good videos, those are pretty good. Uh, okay, and it's when they get excited. Uh, so you know you get you, you're going hot and heavy with your girlfriend, and all of a sudden she drops off to sleep. I mean that's kind of embarrassing and insulting at the same time. Uh, it has to do with excitement. I had a girlfriend once that uh, when you uh, started making out with her, her eyes would change color. <laughs> but, but, they, but they sleep like at night normally? Oh yeah, they sleep, yeah. And, and the, the problem that they will have, uh, despite the fact that they're having these narcoleptic fits from you know, every 90 minutes or so, uh, they don't sleep very deep. Uh, because their sleep pattern is that they jump right into REM sleep, so they don't uh, they don't go through the delta wave. The delta wave is where you actually uh, gain all of your um, rest. Uh, it's been discovered that there are several breeds of dog with a mutated gene that causes the orexin neuropeptide to malfunction. Uh, so if you've ever been around these breeds, maybe you found one that had actually had uh, narcolepsy. Uh, Doberman Pinschers, Labrador, Labrador Retrievers, and Dachshunds. 
Uh, all three of those are actually German dogs. The Labrador Retriever, despite the, the name Labrador, which is up in Canada, uh, it's a German dog, the Labrador Retriever. So these are all German dogs. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything. There's lots of other German breeds, Rottweilers, German Shepherds, and whatnot. That was English. That what? Labrador, Labrador English. Labrador, Labrador is, is in Canada, but it's... No, oh, I thought that that was English. No, all those, all those breeds are, are originated in Germany. Uh, I don't know if it has anything to do with... One thing has anything to do with the other. Uh, but um, I used to have a red uh, Doberman pincher. He didn't have narcolepsy. He only had three legs. It's kind of an interesting dog. I know it was his left front leg was missing, so he <laughs> would hop around on his, his right leg. He was, he was a good dog. Researchers, he's a hero. I'll, someday I'll tell you a story about a hero dog. Uh, well, I'll tell you right now. He, <laughs> I, was, I was walking in a... Um, I, I uh, used to live in Washington, D.C., and this was a uh, suburb right up in Maryland. Uh, it was a black neighborhood, uh, but it was the safest neighborhood you could possibly imagine. Uh, the bad people were the white people <laughs> in the neighborhood. Now, of course, I wasn't one of the bad people, but uh, uh, I would walk my dog every night. I'd walk him up around the block. Uh, so one night, uh, of course, he's only got three legs. Uh, so one night, he's just yanking me along. I couldn't figure out what was going on. He's sprinting. You know, this is a three-legged dog sprinting. And I could run about as fast as he could, you know, with his one leg, <clears throat> with his one front leg. Uh, anyway, so he starts sprinting, and I'm, he's dragging me along, and I'm trying to slow him down, and I can't. He's just, and he's making that really strange high-pitched noise, like something, something's wrong, uh, like either he's hurt or something is, is going on. Anyway, there was a guy robbing a lady, and he had come up to her uh, and when she uh, started to open her car door. She rolled down her window. He knocked on her window. Her, he tapped on her window. She rolled her window down, and he had a gun, and he had a, was pointing it at her. Uh, and he was trying to rob her. And so here comes my dog around the corner. Big dog, big red doby. You know, he's a really sweet dog. And, and he takes off for this guy. Uh, and this guy was on the other corner, so we had you know that about 100 yards to, to cover. And he and he's making his yip yip noise, uh, which means. He's after something. That's the same noise he made when he chased rabbits. <laughs> anyway, he starts making that yip yip noise. This guy looks up. He sees that the dog's coming at him, and uh, he grabs the lady's purse and takes off. And, and old, of course, old Ralph wants to wants to tackle him, but I'm trying to hold him back. Well, the guy's got a gun. <clears throat> anyway, we chased the guy off. Turned out that uh, instead of his her purse, he grabbed her umbrella. So the guy, <laughs> the guy stole her umbrella. <laughs> but it was Ralph that chased the guy away. It certainly wasn't me. I'm not that intimidating. But a big red Doberman pincher with one front leg is kind of intimidating. Anyway, it chased him away. So Ralph's a hero. That's his name, bro. Ralph, yeah. Named him after the Ralph stores in California. <clears throat> That's where I got him in California. Oh, man, I remember those stores, too. And Alpha Beta. Yeah, good stores. And anyway, Docs, or Doberman Pinchers is one of them. Yeah, they, these, of course, are two brothers, and they both had uh, uh, narcolepsy, and they were so excited to see each other that they both collapsed and went to sleep. <laughs> Researchers have also produced mice with orexin uh, receptors who display similar symptoms. They just fall asleep when they get excited. Uh, the cells that produce orexin re uh, reside in the hypothalamus. Uh, recent rodent studies indicate that these cells connect to the brain, re to brain regions that are involved in sleep and wakefulness, including the locus ceruleus, and that's the one that has to do with uh, ADHD. Uh, Raphae nuclei, the tu tuberal mammillary nucleus, and the pontine reticular formation. These are just formations in the brain. Uh, these, uh, this evidence suggests that, that normally orexin helps uh, the sleep and wakefulness areas carry out their jobs. Uh, the orexin related abnormalities may impair their function, and therefore there are select individuals with narcolepsy uh, because of the orexin. 
or the mutated orexin. And that is the end. Uh, you, you need to see these videos, they're really fascinating. Uh, if you've never seen anybody with narcolepsy just drop out, and they do, they just collapse. It's really kind of fascinating. Or at least it is to me. I am a fun guy. My wife called me twice today. Dang. I know. Already. Yeah. I'm trying to get ready for work. She's what? Uh, two, two hours in? Or one hour? Uh, one. She's one hour away. Oops, I'm going the wrong direction. No, I'm not going the right direction. Uh, chapter 15 is about emotions, aggression, and stress. There's, well, there aren't that many theories about emotion. Um, we know that emotion exists. I mean, we all have, we're all happy, we're sad, we're excited, we're fearful, uh, we're disgusted, whatever. We, we know these emotions exist, but uh, for a long time they couldn't figure out why. And of course, society tries to control your emotions, especially this society, uh, the, the Diné people, uh, display very few emotions. Uh, it's not uh, acceptable to, to display emotions in this, in this environment. Uh, it's not the same way with all tribes. It's re that's really kind of fascinating to me. Um, Marius was just complaining about it in my office, about Navajos and <laughs> their inability. <laughs> he says, sometimes I hate my people. <clears throat> But what he was talking about, uh, he was talking about an individual that, well, he's talking about the same thing he was talking about out here. Uh, an individual was giving him a hard time because he thought that he deserved special treatment because of who he is. I don't know. That's stupid. Yeah. Well, it's, some people. Think he has clout, huh? Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of like being wealthy. Uh, if you've ever been around wealthy people, they, they just assume yeah. that, uh, that you'll give them whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that uh, whatever the rules are, it doesn't apply to them because of money. Uh, as if money is... It's the exact thing. That, oh, we were in the airport, right? right. We were getting ready to uh, freaking... Um, we were like literally just out of country. We haven't showered, nothing, right? I mean, we still have like mud on our freaking uniform, oh. you know? And this freaking rich bitch, yeah. Because, okay. oh my God, I think TSA is, uh, excuse me, man, you guys come up here. <laughs> <laughs> and then as we're walking, we, you know, everybody's clapping, but yeah. she's, just, she's just all like, and they gave her a hard time. Like, you, you get to the other side, right. and we're in uh, Atlanta, mm -hmm. you know, and when you go to TSA in Atlanta, it opens up, you know, and we uh, walked over there, and I didn't make her take off her shoes, everything. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, some people, yeah, their nose is so st stuck up in the air. Man. And we're having the problem because we have a president that has always been wealthy, and he's he's spoiled. He's like a spoiled kid. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. We saw what happened this weekend. He he's tweeting negative. He's in trying to intimidate the witnesses that in, in the impeachment trials. Yeah. And he doesn't understand that that's against the law. Intimidation of a witness is against the law. They told him not to do it, but he, he did it again yesterday. He was, he was tweeting about, about the witness today, which isn't, it's not his, she doesn't work for him. She works for Pence. So this ought to be interesting to see what happens. It's, it's really irritating to me because I went to college with these people. And they just assumed, they just assume that they get everything. And usually they do. Uh, money talks and bullshit walks. Uh, and of course, so they, yeah. they get away with stuff. They just get away with stuff. And it's kind of frustrating for those of us who aren't wealthy, I guess. And don't want to be wealthy. I, I, don't, I wouldn't want that. I don't know. You know how much taxes you have to pay? They don't pay any taxes. Pay any, yeah. Really? They don't pay any taxes. No. Jesus. Trump hasn't paid taxes for 10 years. You can't get him on evasion? No, he's, he, no, there's a, there, he lost $8 billion 10 years ago. So 
when he files his tax return, he takes that as a loss, so that and that counts against his how much tax he has to pay. So he doesn't pay any taxes. He hasn't paid taxes for ten years. It's the reason he doesn't want to release his taxes. Eight billion. That's probably like changed it. Not. No, that's a lot of money. <laughs> He's theoretically only has seven, five or seven billion or something like that. I say only, but then again, I mean, you you can live uh, a, a freaking comfortable as life with just a million dollars. Oh yeah, sure, yeah, off the interest, off the interest rate, and he's got a thousand million. That's a billion dollars, and he's got five of those. Yeah, so. He doesn't pay any taxes. The wealthy don't pay taxes. That's the whole point. And that's one of the reasons why Elizabeth Warren wants to tax them 2% over $50 million. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm irritated. I, I get yeah. really irritated with wealthy people. Um, when I was in college, we had a, um, uh, there was one of the, the people in my class, uh, came, I told you this, he came to school with two cars, a Shelby Cobra and a Ferrari. He gave the Ferrari to his, uh, he liked the Shelby Cobra. It's lower on the ground. Uh, so Ooh, he gave the Ferrari to his roommate. I'm sorry? Was it a 427? This was in 67, so I'm not sure what it was. Yeah, it's a nice car. Yeah, it is a nice car. <clears throat> anyway, okay, so emotions have four aspects. Uh, they have whatever the feeling is. Uh, then they have to do with actions. Uh, what actions do you have when you're happy? You smile. Okay. Uh, emotions often trigger action and are intensified by the presence of the feelings. Fear, of course, you run away or you, you have uh, you get prickly thing, feelings all over your body. Facial expressions are also demonstrative to others and may act as a warning mechanism. Uh, and this is, uh, this is what Darwin said. Darwin said that the reason that we have emotions is so that we can uh, display those emotions that will either warn somebody of who we are or what's going on with us, or it warns them to get away from us. Um, if, we're, if we look fearful, of course, and you see somebody looking fearful, then you can go the other direction so that you won't get injured like they're getting injured. And of course, this happened on Friday. They had this shooting in uh, Santa Clarita, uh, which is just north of Los Angeles. That's like an hour from Los Angeles, I think. Yeah, hour north, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> hour north, that's Antelope. It's, it's uh, Antelope, 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 Antelope Canyon. Yeah, Antelope yeah. Valley. That's Edwards Air Force Base. Have you ever been to Edwards? I grew up in San Diego. Oh. So that's city before the Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Like, a, uh, if you go in some apartments in Chula Vista, you can see TJ. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay, there you go. You got to live where you can see Mexico. Physiological arousal, of course, somatic and auto uh, autonomic responses, and motivational programs uh, that, that have to do with the emotions that you're feeling. Emotions tend to have intensities from low to high. Uh, if you, you can be happy, you can be joyful, or you can be to the point, uh, you can be ha so happy that you are, have reached ecstasy. Regard, affection, and adoration, uh, uh, apprehension, fear, terror, uh, distraction, surprise, amazement, Pensiveness, sadness, grief, uh, boredom, disgust, loathing, annoyance, anger, rage, alertness, uh, expectation, vigilance. Of course, these are all intensities of emotion. So we can have we can have a little bit, or we can have a lot. Uh, some people, uh, all their emotions are extreme. Uh, people with borderline personality disorder, for example, uh, they don't have normal emotions. They have extreme emotions. Uh, so, and of course, well, part of the problem with somebody with borderline personality disorder is if they are in love with somebody, they're, they're head over heels and they're, they just go berserk. Uh, they get angry with them. They don't just get angry with them. Uh, they get, uh, they, they uh, loathe them. They despise them. They hate them. Would you say that people with like, uh, like the same stuff that, uh, you know, for me, it's kind of like messed up. Like your emotions? emotions? Yeah. Because of your your injury? Yeah. No. Could be. I don't know. You tell me. Do you have extreme emotions? 
Uh, I get pissed off a lot. And you get angry a lot. Okay. Yeah, over just like <clears throat> something my daughter does or something, and it just. Right. So that's why they just kind of stay in the room. Right. But you control it. You can control your anger. Um, By removing yourself from the situation. Yeah. Or if, like, uh, if it's like real bad, then uh, I'll uh, break some. I already broke the laptop. Like, uh, you know, it opens up like this. Sure. I just snap there and have over my knee. Sure. You know? So. You broke a laptop. Who were you punishing? HP, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think <clears throat> HP felt it. I think HP is really happy that you broke that, that computer. I'm guessing it was, you're going to have to buy a new computer, so. Yeah, I, did, I got one the next day. Yeah. But it is, yeah. Yeah. So you're angry and you're, you're punishing yourself. No, I just get pissed off. I just right. put the new you know. But who had to pay for your new laptop? Oh, me. Yeah, exactly. So you're punishing yourself. At the time, I wasn't thinking about that. No, of course not. Nope, you're just pissed. Uh, a lot of uh, and I was talking to somebody this weekend, uh, another another veteran, and they were and of course they don't have TBI. They don't have any any any. Uh, they have PTSD, but they didn't have TBI. Um, and he was saying that. Um, how can I explain this? Uh, it had to do with coming back. Uh, and of course we saw this in World War II, we saw this in Vietnam, uh, we saw it in the first Iraq War, um, and we're seeing it with people coming back. I, you know, you get, you get so keyed up that when you come back, everything seems so slow, slow and mundane. I mean, people just don't understand <clears throat> what, you know, the, the horror that you've been through and the, the, the intensity of, of your life up to this point. And this is one of the reasons why uh, veterans, uh, when, they, when they retire or they get out of the service, they have a really hard time adjusting to civilian life because civilians are, are clueless. No offense. I'm fine with that. <laughs> you don't mind being clueless? <laughs> it's better than knowing all that shit that everybody else does. Okay. Uh, and, and it makes them angry. And so they strike out. Uh, my, what did my brother do? My brother went into bars and beat people up. Um, you know, he would he would find out who was a veteran in the in the uh, in the bar, and he would never fight another veteran. Uh, but uh, he would just cold cock. And he's a little bitty. I mean, he was a he was a for the that rush. That he, yeah, well, that's what he wanted, <clears throat> and that, that's how he dissipated his anger was to go in and and he was mad at everybody because Vietnam was a totally different situation. But uh, he was mad at everybody because they didn't support him when he came back. So he would go into bars and just clean them out, uh, beat everybody up. It didn't matter how big they were because he never fought fair anyway. He, f he fought to win. And I, he'd kick you in the nuts. He, he didn't. Yeah, it's <laughs> you know, he'd hit you in the throat. Uh, he would uh, poke you in the eye. I mean, he, he didn't. It's not one of these things, you know, he would fight to win, just like he did when he was over in Vietnam. Of course, he, he was a tunnel rat, so... They didn't really have much room to fight. They didn't have any room to fight. They didn't have any room to fight. A lot of times they couldn't fire their weapon because they were trying to... You fire your weapon and you uh, alert everybody in the tunnel. So uh, they would uh, they'd fight with knives. Uh, it's, it, was, it was not a happy situation. It was not a happy situation. <laughs> and now he won't go. <laughs> he hates to be inside. <laughs> of course he does. He, 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 uh, and he has, uh, he's been out of, of course, that was, he was over there in 70, 69 and 70. Uh, and he has created his, Room as if it was it's his, it was his hooch back in Vietnam. It looks just like it. He sleeps on a bunk, you know. I'm, 
He could sleep at any. The kid's got all the money in the world. He could buy the best bed in the world. But no, he sleeps on a, on a cot, on an army cot, with an army blanket. I know. There's nothing scratchier than an army blanket. It's made out of, I don't know, it's itchy stuff, itchy well, scratchy well, stuff. It is, it, yeah, it's the roughest blue you can possibly have. Reading literature uh, pre-20th century, it was fairly obvious that folk psychology felt that feelings caused uh, the physical reaction. But then came James, <coughs> James and Lang. William James, of course, was the Harvard professor, uh, the brilliant, uh, he was one of the James boys. Um, his brother was an author, he was, a, he was a Harvard professor, and he came up with all these theories. So the first, uh, the first real psychologist in the United States was William James, and he came up with a theory of emotion. Um, primarily, he was trying to argue with Darwin, uh, because Darwin, of course, was, was Darwin. It took Darwin 30 years to publish, uh, and the reason he didn't publish was because of his religion. Uh, he didn't want to say anything that would potentially make him have to go to hell. Uh, so he delayed and delayed and delayed, and eventually, of course, the only reason he published was because uh, there was a, another individual that was about to publish this, uh, almost the same thing, a guy by the name of Russell. Anyway, James did uh, research uh, looking at emotions, and he came up with the idea that uh, feelings uh, were a reaction to the physical change. So you had the physical change first, and then you, uh, um, then you had the proper emotion. So you would, you would start smiling, and then you'd feel happy. So the more you smiled, the more you felt happy. That was, uh, that was James's idea. And that was also Carl Lang's idea. Carl Lang was, was Swedish, and they both published at the same time, and that's the reason they call it the James Lang theory. The reality is that in Europe, they call it the Lang-James theory, or they just call it the Lang theory, because actually, Lang published first, so it should be, it should be just the Lang theory. Anyway, uh, so fleeing from an enemy causes fear and smiling causes happiness, that was the idea. James and Lang were aware that often there is a de delay in feelings after the, the physiological response, and if you've ever been in a situation uh, let's say uh, you, you wander up into the attic and all of a sudden a bat flies past your face. You know, that's really scary. Uh, uh, the first thing you do is you duck and, and you tense up and then you start feeling fear. Uh, the reality is as humans, of course, we need to be able to escape. Uh, so we have the emotion afterwards. And this, of course, is what we train soldiers to do. We train soldiers to go ahead and fight the battle, and then afterwards, you get to have your reaction. That's what we train you guys to do, you guys. So that's what they train us to do. <laughs> but sometimes it keeps going and going, that it gets blocked. You know, yeah, kind of well, sure, yeah, it, yeah, it, and you can get into a situation, this is one of the reasons why you guys joked about uh, stuff after, after you were in a firefight, you would, somebody would start swearing and then somebody else would get, and they would show anger, but then somebody else would show humor, uh, and it was dissipating all, all of these emotions that you had. Uh, potentially, one of the emotions you had while you were, bullets were pinging around your head was fear, but of course you couldn't show that emotion because you needed to continue uh, to, to do what you needed to do. Uh, so you would, uh, you would keep firing. Uh, that's an emotion you didn't want to think about. I was scared my very first tour. But after like second, third, whatever, I, I wasn't. Right, and you were... You, you but the, the first way, I was, I was scared as well. Six, you had six deployments. Yeah. Okay. Because <clears throat> yeah. we, we didn't have up armor on bees, it was straight, just the little doors. That was so stupid. What did they think? Oh, nothing. This has to be. Well, look at the vest we had. It's like Vietnam flag vest. That's all we had. First one then. Oh, complain about the Vietnam flag vest. I had to wear one of those damn things the whole time I was over there. I don't. That's not fair. We had. Did you have steel plates in your vest? Were they steel uh, or were they Kevlar? Kevlar. Uh, Kevlar. Ceramic. 
ceramic. Yeah. Yeah. See, we had steel plates, and they were heavy. Oh, man. Exactly. <clears throat> Research by Walter Cannon and Philip Bard refuted the James Lane theory. Uh, Cannon and Bard discovered that the experience of the emotion started before the autonomic uh, changes. Uh, not only that, but often the aut autonomic uh, changes are identical for different emotions, readying the individual for fight or flight. So you have the emotion and then you react to it. Cannon and Bard felt that it was the cerebral cortex's responsibility to find the appropriate emotion to fit the circumstances. So we have two conflicting theories. One, the James Lang theory, uh, which was right at the turn of the 20th century, and then Cannon and Bard came along in the 20s and 30s. So we have two different ideas. By that time, both James and Lang were dead. Okay. A lot of times, these theories can't change until the person dies. Because everybody has so much respect for them, nobody wants to say anything <laughs> negative about their ideas. Yeah. So we have to wait until they die. That's as stupid as that sounds. Uh, work by Stanley Schachter. Okay, so fa finally Cannon and Bard died. And then Stanley Schachter started doing his research back <laughs> in the 50s and 60s. He showed that both theories are correct in select circumstances and incorrect in select circumstances. Schachter injected individuals with epinephrine. Uh, that, of course, is the hormone that is secreted during fight and flight, uh, which made individuals react emotionally, and that fit the James Lang theory. So if I inject both of you with epinephrine, you will have an emotional reaction. Okay, and that fits the James Lang theory. But, the, uh, but in the same circumstance, if a confederate acted with a select emotion in the presence of the individual, the individual displayed the bogus emotion. Okay, so you would get excited and then uh, you would have the emotion that the other person was showing. <clears throat> so if somebody started laughing, you would laugh hysterically because of the epinephrine. Uh, if, you, if they showed fear, you would show fear because of the epinephrine that you were injected with. And that fits the Canyon and Bard theory. So the reality is that it really all depends on the circumstance as to how you react. Uh, so in essence, both James and Lang and, and Cannon and Bart are correct. Okay, I'm going to show you some pictures and you have to tell me what emotions they display. <clears throat> this should be interesting. How about number one, what emotion is this? Annoyed. Uh, Trump just got put in the office. <laughs> <laughs> How about this one? How about two? Happy. Happy, okay. <clears throat> Whoops, I'm getting, sorry, I went the wrong direction. How about this one? Angry. Angry? Final exams. <laughs> yeah, finally. That's anger. How about this one? Uh, Number four. If you saw somebody looking like that, what would you? Uh, I don't know, man. Animal. It was animal. Mm -hmm. Serial sure killer. Ted Bundy. Okay. All right. How about five? Anger. 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 How about six? Annoyed. Seven. Confused. Disgusted. Disgusted. How about eight? Scared. All right. Nine. Worried. Ten. Surprise. Okay. Eleven. Mm. Scared. Scared. Uh, confused. Surprise? Mm -hmm. yeah. Surprise? How about 12? Yeah. Mm. Sly. <laughs> What'd you say? Sly. 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 <laughs> How about 13? Whatever. Mm. Um. Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa. And what was her emotion? And that has been the question ever since he came on that page. Okay, how about 14? This is, this is one only in Indian country. Nobody else recognizes this emotion. Frustrated? 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 Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with... Now this may not be, this may not work down here. I've never gotten the right answer down here. But up north, they know this one right away. Maybe it is happy. Maybe it's a northern, northern Indian country thing. Probably. I'd say annoyed though. Annoyed. Okay. What, what is it? 
she snaps her, this is, she's snapping her eyes, so she's angry. She's snapping her eyes. I never heard the term snap your eyes until I get up north, and then if somebody looks at you real fast, and doesn't look directly at you, it's called snapping your eyes. It's something that women do, especially up north. I guess maybe it doesn't happen down here. Maybe the men never make women unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's up in your eyes, it exists. Yeah, it's, and it's really kind of weird because they'll be sitting there and they won't move their heads at all, but they'll move their eyes, just snap their eyes. That's kind of interesting. Uh, happy. happy. 15 is happy. How about 16? Happy to it. Okay. 17? Happy. How about 18? It's a nice loud one. <laughs> okay, so we have some emotions. Uh, we have some emotions that are very similar. Uh, she's bored. He's happy. Uh, he's angry. Uh, that is a false smile that he has. Yeah. A false smile. False smiles are tough. Usually, false smiles are with your lips closed, so you're not showing any teeth. Yeah. That's a false smile. So that, that can guy, mean anything, right? A um, false smile can mean anything. Yeah. 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 Well, it doesn't show any actually emotions. Yeah. But it, it, I was going to say no emotion. It but. should be read. Yeah, it should be read as something. This man is enraged. He's so angry, he's about to punch somebody. And we know that because he's showing his teeth. Now, the funny thing is, and I've done this, I've been doing this for over 20 years. Let me think. I've been doing this for 28 years. Anyway, uh, men get this one, but women don't. They think he's disgusted. And now, why in the world would women not recognize enraged? Why? How do we learn emotions? Who teaches us facial expressions? Um, the people we grow up with. Yeah, yeah. Probably your mother. Potentially, it's your mother, and she'll make faces at you. And then she'll tell you what it is. Mothers very rarely tell their children, show their children rage. Mm -hmm. Rage is, is an extreme emotion. Yeah. But And little girls don't see it on the playground. But little boys do. When somebody's angry, they, you know, you get into a fist fight, somebody's got their teeth. Somebody's showing teeth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so little boys figure this one out real fast. Little girls, they may never see this. Hopefully they may never see this. However, if they've got a husband and the husband gets really pissed off, she, they're not going to recognize the emotion that he's showing and they're going to get punched in the face. And this may be one of the reasons why women re sometimes will not respond correctly to their husband's emotions. I, I, I've never shown my teeth to know that really pissed off. You've never been that angry. Go <clears throat> ahead. Oh, I'll just shut down and be quiet. I'm guessing when you broke that computer that you were probably showing your teeth. Uh, you had your teeth clenching. clenched together, exactly. And you were probably they showing my jaw. Your so that's, and your yeah. jaw potentially got sore because of it. Yeah. Okay, that's disgust and that's fear. Uh, that's concern, that's surprise. This is a surprise, but it's a, it's a more extreme surprise. She's horny. Sorry. Sly. Uh, yeah. Boredom that's <laughs> snapping your eyes. Now this is really kind of interesting. This is a lady uh, is an English actress. Her name's Dawn French. The one on the left is a real smile. The one on the right is not. Okay. She looks happy in both. But one, the one on the left has a real smile. She's showing her teeth. Yeah. Okay. He's showing his teeth. That's a real smile. The one on the right is, is she's, oh, she's not unhappy, certainly, but she is, uh, that's not a real smile. Okay. <laughs> facial expressions, uh, there are seven facial expressions that are recognized in almost all cultures around the world. Anger, of course, is, shown, is, is recognized everywhere. Sadness, uh, happiness, fear, disgust, surprise, and contempt. 
These are all the emotions that we see no matter where we go. Uh, and, and that's good because I, I've been to Europe, I've been to Asia, uh, I've seen a lot of people. Uh, different cultures display different emotions uh, readily. Uh, we were just talking about the Navajo and how uh, Marius is, is kind of disgusted with his own people, but then again, Marius doesn't live on the reservation. He lives in Snowflake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he doesn't, he's not around his own people very much. Yeah. His own family, but not his own people. And of course, he's irritated because the student gave him a hard time. <clears throat> anyway, so we see these emotions. And sometimes, of course, we, we see the emotions differently. Um, the Japanese are kind of interesting people. The Japanese uh, do never, will never say no to you. They will never say no. Now that doesn't mean that they always say yes. Well, they will always say yes, but they don't always mean yes. If they can say something with their mouth, but it's their eyes. You have to you have to look at their eyes to determine what they're thinking. So they can say yes and really mean no, and that's what happened during World War II. They were trying to tell us that they were angry and that they were they they were going to go to war. And if we had understood their culture, then we would have recognized that they were about to attack us. As far as they were concerned, it was, it was obvious. And it's one of the reasons why they don't call Pearl Harbor a surprise attack. They were shocked that, that we weren't prepared because they'd been giving us all these messages all along. Not in words, but in the way that they said them. <clears throat> and that's the way it works in, in Japan. And this is one of the reasons why we have uh, American GIs have so much trouble in Japan. Uh, they, they, kicked, uh, they kicked all the Marines out off of the mainland of Japan because the, the Marines can't, are, are, un, are, are out of control. And uh, of course, um, the uh, with, and Japanese women will not say no. So they think, oh, I'm going to get lucky tonight. And they ain't lucky at all. They, they're not going to get lucky. The woman has told them, yeah, let's go, let's go out. But they didn't, it doesn't mean let's have sex. It means, yeah, I'll go out with you, but I'm, that's, that's it. They don't recognize it. They, they just miss it. We're Americans. We're very direct with, with what we think and how we feel. But we don't recognize the more subtle emotions that other people show. And for that reason, there's no more marine bases on, uh, on the mainland of Japan. There's one in Okinawa, I guess. I never been to Japan. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Anyway, Air Force bases. Kadena. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kadena. Uh, Masawa. Masawa's up north. That's, a, that's where we were stationed up north. Anyway, kind of interesting people. Uh, facial expressions are created by two sets of facial muscles, uh, the superficial facial muscles. Uh, they change the shape of the mouth, the eyes, or the nose, and they pull on uh, their attached skin. The frontalis muscles wrinkle the forehead and raises the eyebrows. And then there's the deep facial muscles. These are attached to the skeletal structures of the head. They enable the individual to chew. The masseter is the powerful jaw muscle. And of course, that's uh, that's the one that allows you to crack nuts with your with your jaws. Um, once upon a time, the hominids uh, we as hominids we had much stronger jaws than we have today. We had much stronger teeth than we have today, and for that reason, we were able to eat harder foods, uh, nuts and whatnot. <clears throat> but now we're kind of wimpy. We're fairly delicate creatures. Uh, if you ever tangle with a, a great ape, a chimpanzee, or a, an orangutan, uh, if they bite down on you, they will take a chunk out of you. Humans very rarely can because we don't, our jaw muscles are just not that strong. Uh, we can bite, but we can't really bite off chunks, <clears throat> not, like, not like other animals can. But it's our jaw muscles, all these deep muscles. I was going to say Mike Tyson. 
Uh, he was lucky that he put the guys here <laughs> in many, many places else. He, he probably would have just left Marks. Exactly. <laughs> he did buy a chunk of his ear off. Uh, human facial muscles are inter innervated by two cranial nerves, the V2. Uh, innervates the uh, superficial muscles of the facial expression, and the trigeminal nerve uh, inter innervates the muscles that move the jaw. So your, the trigeminal muscle controls this part right here. Right and left nerves are com uh, completely independent. This is the reason why you can wink and blink uh, one eye at a time. Uh, it allows you to crinkle half of your face and not the whole face, uh, so we have the ability to do that. Uh, most animals can't. They, all, all of their nerves are, are connected, their facial muscles are all connected. Uh, but as humans, of course, we can show different emotions. And potentially one of the reasons that we have evolved the way that we have is so that we can show different muscles, or we can show different emotions, and that we can speak. Uh, we uh, can, you can talk out of one side of your mouth if you want to, and there are people that do that, like Humphrey Bogart uh, had a, uh, he had a problem with, with part of his face. Uh, he was in a fight, and uh, he was actually in World War I. He was in the Navy during World War I. He got in a fight, and uh, somebody punched him, and it innervated half of his face to some extent, so, the, so that he always talked out of the side of his mouth. And that's one of the reasons why when he, uh, when he was, uh, first got into acting, uh, he was uh, always a, uh, a gangster. He was always a heavy. And then eventually, of course, they, they moved into the noir movement where the heroes were, were kind of anti-heroes. So like, just say, um, you know how people get um, burned? Yeah. And like, if it affects their face, does it affect their um, facial muscles as mm -hmm. well, like deep down? Right. So when that happens and when they get surgery, will they retain that part of their face to express emotion? It all depends on the degree of damage. Usually not. Yeah. Usually they can't restore that, that aspect. Um, there have, they have done uh, facial uh, transplants here lately. And that's the biggest problem that they're having, is the fact they can't really tie all the nerves back together again. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's one of the reasons why if something happens to the nerves of your face, uh, like a stroke, Okay. Yeah. Or Bell's palsy that uh, they they lose the ability to show uh, proper emotions. Botox. Botox, and that's actually what Botox does. I, I can remember watching uh, Cher on David Letterman, and she's sitting there and she wants to laugh, but she can't laugh <laughs> yeah. because she's so Botoxed up. I guess. Ha ha ha! Yeah, it's one of those kind of things. Yeah. So she can't show the emotions in her face because she's so Botox. And like the funny, another funny thing too is like when people like go into like the dentist and like they get shots in the right. mouth and they can't express they, any type of feelings. Exactly. Right they can't control their bottom <laughs> lip. And then, and then, and then. Yeah, and they start drooling. And it's so funny. <laughs> Bell's palsy is caused by an irritation of the nerves on one side of your face. Uh, uh, the flu can, can do this. Yeah. It can give you Bell's palsy. Usually that goes away as soon as the, the virus is gone, the Bell's palsy is gone. Uh, but I've seen people that uh, had dental surgery done, and they had Bell's palsy after the dental surgery. Uh, I was, when I was in the service, I had an NCOIC of uh, microbiology uh, that had Bell's palsy. Um, and, and he had had it for like two months, and he was afraid that it was permanent. Um, I was there for, this is a right path, so I was there for six months, I guess. And by the time I left, his Bell's palsy was getting better. It got better all the time, but when I first met him, it looked like he'd had a stroke. He couldn't move his, his, the left side of his face at all. Couldn't, couldn't do anything with it, so he'd, he'd had to do everything with the right side of his face. Uh, and by the time I left, it was almost completely gone, <clears throat> the Bell's palsy. Depending on where the Bell's palsy originates, uh, just a small portion of the entire uh, side of the face can, or the entire 
side of the face, and he had the entire side of his face. It looked like he had had a stroke. Dental work often causes problems, but the condition is rarely permanent. Uh, sometimes it'll go away as soon as the Novocaine wears off. Yeah. Through studies with animals and emotionally disturbed humans, uh, researchers discovered an area of the brain that deals with emotion. Uh, this is the limbic system, in the center of your brain. That's where your emotion is controlled, right in the middle of your brain. The limbic system includes uh, basal forebrain nuclei, the mammillary body, the olfactory bulb, the amygdala, the hippocampus, the parahippocampal gyrus, the cingulate gyrus, the anterior nucleus of the dorsal uh, thalamus and all of these are part of your limbic system and that's where your emotion comes from. Studies uh, using electrodes implanted in the brain have discovered that most areas of the brain do not produce positive reactions. However, positive brain sites do seem to, uh, to be uh, concentrated in the hypothalamus. So we're looking for, for positive emotions coming out of your hypothalamus. Uh, and this, of course, is one of the ways that we can make you happy, is by uh, giving you serotonin reuptake inhibitors, increasing the amount of serotonin in your hypothalamus. The most apparent area is a large tract that ascends uh, from the midbrain to the hypothalamus, a region referred to as the medial forebrain bundle. <clears throat> this area seems to have something to do with food-seeking behavior in lower animals. Uh, it also has to do with sex. So it's our, and, and we uh, see sex as a positive thing. This is, it's a, a positive emotion. So this is, is the area of the brain that controls our sex, our food, uh, uh, our desire for food, and our happiness, as weird as that may seem. So all of this stuff is tied together, as confusing as that is. And it can be confused, and this may be one of the reasons why people uh, assault people sexually. This may be one of the reasons why uh, we have individuals that uh, cannot stop eating because they they find they get such pleasure out of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> as fat as a toad. The yeah. only reason I'm not fatter is like a wood hauling in room. <laughs> That's not the reason. The reason is because you don't eat that much. <laughs> Physicians have noted the differences of people uh, with localized cerebrovascular accidents, the strokes or hemorrhages uh, in your brain, uh, to emotional reactions. A stroke in the right parietal or temporal lobe causes undue cheerfulness or joking, uh, denial of illness, and apathy. And of course, this area of your brain rarely gets hit by a stroke. It would be nice if all strokes made people happy, but instead it makes them kind of grump grumpy and grouchy. Unfortunately, the stroke does. <clears throat> and that's on the right parietal. Right, right. okay. Yeah. Ouch. I know. Why couldn't we all have strokes right there? It doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, cerebrovascular accidents in the left frontal lobe, especially in the basal ganglia area, can cause depressed mood, daily mood variation, loss of energy, anxiety, restlessness, worry, weight loss, decreased appetite, early morning awakening. Uh, delayed sleep onset, social withdrawal, irritability. Usually your stroke occurs in the area where you have the most, uh, where you do the most, um, there's uh, emotion. That's, it's the part that you, you utilize more than any other part. Okay. And unfortunately, unfortunately, the left frontal lobe, of course, this has to do with your thinking. Uh, so this is the area that gets hit more than and unfortunately, your right parietal lobe. Otherwise, you'd be happy. Always happy. <laughs> I know. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I think I've had a stroke in my right parietal lobe. I'm almost <laughs> always happy. Bilateral hemispheric lesions or any lesions in the brain can cause frequent uh, brief laughing and or crying. Uh, crying that is not caused by sadness. Social withdrawal secondary to emotional outbursts. We've had, uh, it's really kind of interesting, because we've had, uh, there's uh, commercials on television about ind individuals with bilateral hemispheric lesions. Um, it's really kind of weird having these advertisements on television saying, you know, if, if, you, if you cry frequently, and you, uh, you, have, uh, you, you seem to show sad emotions without any reason for it, you know, you need to, you need to go see a doctor because you potentially have a lesion in this area of your brain. 
Samuel L. Jackson is the one that, that advertises this stuff.